this internet? Please, we're in front. Of- we're live. Oh. oh, good. Yay! It works! The internet brought us together today. Hi, friends. Hi. Welcome to our Coach's Corner Live. It's so good to see all of you. If you're joining us, please tell us where you are joining us from, what part of the world that you're tuning in from. I want to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Coach Michael Jerishi, the great. I call him Coach Michael the Great because he is an amazing coach. So I'm so grateful that he'll be sharing his expertise and dropping some knowledge bombs on us today. So if you have a burning question for either of us, please drop it in the chat and we will hopefully address all of your questions today. I know Michael and I have some things that we'd like to talk about. And um, first, before we get started, welcome to Balboa Park. This is um, San Diego. It's in one of well, it's in our backyard, really. Um, it's a beautiful park. If you ever find yourself in San Diego, come hang out here. It's absolutely amazing. Great place to get fresh air. And um, I'm just going to say hi to some of you who are tuning in in the chat. Hi, Rachel, Teresa. To, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce your name right, so I apologize. Teresa, please tell me how to pronounce that. I'm so glad my chair cardio has changed your life. Um, Michael, we'll have to get you in some person chair cardio soon. Be warned. It's fun. (laughs) Um, Hi, Debbie. Well, so Michael, what do you want to start talking about tonight? I know we had wanted to talk about some foot injury solutions, um, how to heal properly from a sesamoid injury, anxiety and exercise, a whole bunch of things. Um, What do you think based off of what you've read in the chat so far? What do you think would be a good place to start? Let's take a look. So... Okay, foot injury since May, just from back to running. So losing your mind just a tad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so it sounds like you're just healing from a foot injury and you're getting back into running. Have you started running yet? Um, well, let's just start. How would you take someone from the state of a foot injury safely back into walking and running? Step one, screen your movement. So one of the things that happens when you get injured or there's any pain in the body is that your movement patterns can get altered. So pain creates unpredictable changes between two of the same people with the exact same symptoms. Two people can have the exact same structural issue. Let's say you have the same pain in your foot, but they can cause differences in movement patterns between those two people. So you can't really predict what happens. So as an example, one of the things that happens with our uh, therapy session today, someone goes, let's say they've got a foot injury, they get it operated on, the doctor prescribes them PT. Mm-hmm. That person, the criteria for pain is just pain-free in that foot, but not necessarily that your movement pattern is restored. So I may fix your foot and the issue, but that doesn't guarantee I've restored your squat, your leg raise, we just did a video about that, mm-hmm. your hinge, your overhead. So all these different things, you need to actually read the screen. So the very first step is movement screen see if any of your patterns have been altered because if you've lost your ability let's say to scissor your hips and you're running all the time then all of a sudden you're gonna have compensations that happen down the chain yes the hips, this, for is, this is exactly what happens someone heals from their foot injury and they get back into movement but they're they change their movement patterns they're compensating in ways to protect that injury and so then they end up with another injury because they never really restored the foundation of proper mechanics in their body right Michael? That, that's right always remember if you're in pain the one challenge is you can't answer the question are you in pain because you're moving poorly or are you moving poorly because you're in pain mm-hmm. we don't know and that's because there's not enough testing in the fitness world so go get screened it's simple it's easy i can screen someone just for a basic one in 15 20 minutes obviously you can do more in depth but just do a basic screen find out how your movements are address the issues at the hip as well to get into specifics and then get back into your running as you've rebuilt that foundation because your patterns will have changed. So getting back from a foot injury, maybe your foot has healed. You want to reassess the movement patterns of your entire body and build a foundation of strength that's going to enable you to move properly so that as you ease back into more activity, you're able to do so safely without the risk of another injury. Exactly. Uh, makes total sense. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, th- so one thing I wanted to talk about actually sesamoid specific, and this is another foot injury A lot of people, um, because I suffered from a sesamoid injury, I had one in 2016, and um, the foot is related to what's going up higher up the chain. So a lot of my, now I coach people on how to heal from sesamoid injuries. And so a lot of my clients come in and they're looking at just fixing their foot, not just 
just the foot instead of looking at the whole body and how it functions overall in order to heal from their foot injury. So for those of you healing from a foot injury, and if you're frustrated because you feel like it's not healing fast enough, or you feel like you're missing a piece of the puzzle in injury recovery, I want to encourage you to look at what's going on higher up the chain. Often foot injuries are a result of poor mechanics up the chain, hips, knees, ankles, yeah. something's off. Exactly. So when you're healing from a foot injury, don't just look at fixing your foot, look at addressing your hips, your core, your ankles, your glutes, like all of the things that you need in order to move properly so that your foot can heal in the best way possible. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. Exactly. Oh, what do we, what was the question? Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what you do. I'll dance you should, you can, you can dance. I will dance with that dog. Hello, doggy. Yeah. Hello, dragon. Hi. Um, We've got a live question from someone. Here. Okay. Live question. Um, uh, when I broke my fifth metatarsal dancer's fracture in a dance class, I still have issues. Pain in the bone, tightness in the ankle, hamstring tight. Any suggestions? This is a great one for you. Great one. And also what you said is a great way to segue into this. So, Number one, screen yourself. That's always gonna be the case. Let's move past that though. So let me let me start with by saying this. If I add strength to your knee, but I don't add stability to your hip, your brain doesn't recognize the strength gain. There is an order of how we rebuild the body in a functional way. And it starts with mobility and stability, then it progresses towards strength. Mm -hmm. If any of those things are missing and oftentimes what we see in this type of question is we see some of those pieces somewhere along the way got altered their padding got changed and then all of a sudden now you're experiencing tightness in the hamstring things like that then also what we find is that you're still going to have those same issues so tight hamstrings are a great one we talk about that all the time hamstrings are the backup system for the core if your core that's somewhere along the way stop doing what it's supposed to do and that's normal it's not an indictment it happens to every single one of us especially if we've been injured or if we sit in chairs things like that if that stops doing its job your hamstring will now become the backup system for the core it tries to do the job of your core mm -hmm. but it's so not if your supposed core to shuts off your hamstring overworks and now you're experiencing hamstring tightness right because something that's not doing its job in the body just decided to like be like oh peace out i'm out of here and so something else overworks at the at the heart of this sort of good job at, at the heart of this is one of the things that we often are a big fan of understanding is that muscles don't usually get short so we think of a hamstring that gets stiff or tight and we think that muscle is short but in reality that very rarely happens it's actually a lack of stability or that muscle just layering down trigger points because it's overworked and something else needs to be worked. So you're a great example. We had the hamstring tighten up. We started to do some work on your hips. Clear it up fast, right? Yeah, totally. Um, this is one thing that I love about Coach Michael is that um, he helps his clients understand that you don't need that you can move your way into a better situation and out of tightness and into more mobility and stability and well-rounded function in your whole body absolutely yeah i mean you can fix these things i'm a big fan of understanding that you can fix these things mm -hmm. you know we, we hear it all the time my back is bad or my hamstrings are bad or things like that you know how are you talking to yourself you can make change the human body is amazing mm -hmm. and good feedback so that makes perfect sense so. yeah yeah, your hamstrings are always, especially since you're sitting in a chair, your hamstrings, are, okay, so this is what I would do for you, Rachel. So I would stretch your hip flexors, right. I would engage your core, I would engage your glutes, and then I would continue doing that consistently every single day. Consistency, and Consistency sure. with stretching the hips and engaging the core. Um, those two things can do a lot for you. Um, especially Did we post on the, the hamstring uh, video on your channel? Or is that just on my no, channel? No, not yet. It's on your channel. Okay. We'll have to repost it. Okay, so we're um, we'll, we'll post a, a hamstring video that shows how I stretched my hip flexors and my hamstrings got like infinitely more flexible just in like honestly two minutes. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty cool. um, so if you're actually using the videos on my channel, I have a hip mobility video. So if you just go to YouTube and search Caroline Jordan hip mobility, do that video and then YouTube search Caroline Jordan core stability sandwich them together do them every day and your hamstrings will be infinitely less tight that's Boom. right solution right there do those things loosen up your hamstrings and then do an activity 
that somehow integrates the strength of the core and the hamstring together. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. talk about deadlifting. You've got those in your channel, right? Doing hip bridges yep. and thrusts and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. I've got lots of hamstring strength videos. So again, YouTube search is great. You just search Caroline Jordan hamstring strength and it's all body weights. So you don't need a gym if you're unable to go or use equipment right now due to COVID. Um, so all of its body weight can be done at home, which Perfect. is awesome. Um, hey guys, any thoughts on leg length discrepancies? Should they be fixed to have healthy mechanics? I feel that this might be a cause of my feet and knee pain. First question is, have you seen a specialist? I'm assuming that's coming from a chiropractor, doctor, something like that. Uh, I would say that oftentimes, if we look at the number one cause of you potentially getting injured, it's gonna be previous injury. The number two and number three are gonna be lack of mobility and asymmetries. Yep. Asymmetries are a huge deal and they actually also affect motor control. So what you're saying to have healthy mechanics, absolutely, um, that gets lost in conversation. If you've got a significant asymmetry, it is something to look at because it can affect just your motor control or how you move and how your body operates. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always have a little bit of skepticism. I, I feel like the leg length discrepancy is almost like an asymmetry that can be fixed to a degree. Yes, your structure may be, you know, you may have been born with a different structure, but usually as a rule of thumb, we tend to write those things off when you actually, once again, can make a good amount of change. So watch out, if you've got a discrepancy, hey, maybe you never fix it totally, but there's a lot of cases, and in my, you know, eight out of 10 cases that I work with, that you can make a big deal changing that. And you can learn how to work with it so that it works with you, not against you. Yeah. Um, yes, Coach Michael has a channel, and I will link that in the description box below after this uh, live session, okay? So check out Coach Michael on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, he has a lot of knowledge that he's gonna be dropping on you, so um, definitely follow him. Um, Great comments, everyone loves your chair workouts. Oh, I know, I love the chair workouts too. I actually, I'm People super excited, it. you guys, stay tuned. I'll be, fo I'll be filming a chair dance video. I'm gonna get like super fun with it. We're gonna have a really good time. So chair dance, and I've been doing some chair uh, cardio plus strength. So with dumbbells, which is gonna be fun too. So if you like those, let me know. Um, I always get mixed opinions on to wear a shoe lift or not, but thanks for the advice. Um, I'm so glad that, um, what do you think? Like, so physical therapy, we were talking about this earlier. Um, it's all about, it's just like finding the right fitness coach. Like there's a lot of physical therapy. You have to find the right one that you mesh with and that um, can really help you because I found in my own, this is again, not an indictment on physical therapy, but in my own experience with physical therapy, it's been really subpar, and I unfortunately have been ill-informed by mis by physical therapists, and it's almost led me in the wrong direction. So I don't really know. I have a, a lot of coaching clients that I work with too that unfortunately have not had success. Um, I don't know why that is. If they're just like some physical therapists are just like right out of school and pulling out a piece of paper that just gives people bridges and planks and clamshells, um, and not really looking at the individual and how they move. But I would hope that's not the case. Um, for many of you but it's not that it's not that therapists are bad people or or anything like that nature we learn a lot from therapists but it's not that it's not that therapists are bad people or an issue of that one of the things that we've had ingrained in us since decades ago is the idea in terms of parts and muscles i can't explain how the body moves in pet core firing is pattern specific that means how you choose to fire your core, your abs, your pelvic floor, things like that, depends on the pattern you're in. Hinging, squatting, single leg stance, double leg stance, pushing, pulling, it changes between all those things. So why is it that I can see someone do a single leg lunge on their left leg, it looks great, and all of a sudden it doesn't work whatsoever. I've got the same flexion happening at my knee, at my hip, I've got the same stability working, but it changes between those things. Mm -hmm. Kinesiology has a tough time explaining those things away. And one of the things that we see is that we still look at the body in terms of muscles. What do you see on the internet every single day? Hey, give me some stuff for the obliques, give me some stuff for the quads, give me some stuff for the core. Mm -hmm. We're naming specific muscles, but yet we still say that we move in patterns. Yeah. So a lot of therapists come out and to stress you, the body should be stressed in order mm -hmm. to adapt. And then the second thing that happens is that we end up looking at parts so if you have, once again, going back, the second thing that happens is that we end up looking at parts. So if you have, once again, going back to the knee example, if you have knee surgery, 
to, to do so. Advancing the movement, yeah. working with the body as a whole. And I'm sorry, I was so distracted because I think this girl like fell over on her rollerblades in the background and she was screaming like, help me, help me. And I'm like, I kind of should go help her or something. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry because I was distracted at that question. Um, love Caroline's ab and floor workouts. Oh, thanks, Kylie. Oh, it's nice to see you. Hi, coming in from Australia, right? We just I just emailed you today. So check your e inbox. Um, she was very kind. She donated to the channel. So um, go Kylie. You're awesome. I'm looking for someone to help me like you are talking about, but what do you seek out in California, but Northern? Um, so do you want to work with someone in person or do you want to work with someone virtually? Because now with COVID, I mean, I was already working with all my clients virtually before COVID and then COVID hit. And now I'm booked solid because people don't go to the gym anymore. They're all working from home. So there's a lot you can do virtually. So if you're looking for someone, Oh, hi Kylie. Oh my God. Big smiley, <laughs> big smiley to you. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for someone virtually to work with, there's a lot of talented coaches that will happily work with you. Um, and if you're looking for referrals in your area, this is my tip. Always go to ask for recommendations where the type A athletes are because they are crazy about their bodies. So go where the runners are and go where the triathletes are because they probably spend a lot of money on a lot of different people and can refer you to really good professionals in your area. So um, if you don't know where they hang out, go to like a running shoe store and ask if there's like a group and then go ask for referrals from that group. And I guarantee you, you find a gold mine there. Um, and go to someone that can explain the why too. Yeah, yeah. Someone that doesn't just give you a workout, they can ex give you a workout. They can explain the why that they're giving you that workout. Yeah. This is what drives me crazy. And this is one reason I love Coach Michael so much is there's a lot of BS in the fitness industry. There's a lot of people out there that are not qualified to provide any sort of fitness workout recommendations whatsoever. Um, and they, you know, maybe have like a really good looking butt in a great pair of spandex <laughs> and they're selling like booty lifting programs and people are getting. Oh yeah, and people are getting so injured. And then they're wondering why, but they bought like a $30 ebook from some influencer who doesn't, she's like 20 years old and she has fake lips and doesn't have any sort of qualifications whatsoever to be providing any sort of exercise recommendations. So do your research when you're working with people, make sure they're qualified to help you. They understand, like they definitely, you know, have studied fitness and nutrition and whatever you're hiring them to do. Um, they've worked with clients, they have expertise and um, experience. And so I'm just, I'm so, it drives me crazy because I look on YouTube and I see what's out there and I'm like, wow, no wonder people are breaking their feet left and right. Because if I was yeah. doing, you know, whatever Kylie Minogue's jump rope in my living room on a hardwood floor <laughs> for a hundred million minutes, like that makes sense. Um, so be smart with your body, work with people who can under, who can help you understand why, who can help stability and strength with your body who can help you not just get a great workout and be physically fit but build athletics for the rest of your life fitness is not a one-time thing it's not getting six-pack abs it's being able to function and move well to your 70s 80s and beyond so don't just think short term think long term think about who you're working with it's kind of like diet like what you put in your body is going to help you carry on and live for a long time for the rest of your life what you do with your movement should be the same thing so if it hurts now it's gonna hurt like hell later so think about it and um yeah you'd be really be smart because you get one body you can't return it at the store so speaking of which so a question supplements Ooh. um okay should he cut out the supplements love using okay you know i so I would definitely recommend working with a nutritionist for personalized supplements. There's a lot of crap in supplements, a lot of crap. If you read the nutrition label and you see all the fillers they put in supplements and they charge you a million dollars and I mean, it's not back to the FDA, right? So also supplements are, there's phase one problems, there's phase two and phase three problems. So when we're working with someone on nutrition, both Carolyn and I will, will divide things up into, Hey, is this a phase one issue, the foundation, or is this a phase three? The reality is in most cases, a proper diet and, and is something that can actually give you a lot of the nutrients that you need and you don't need supplements. So that's kind of like a beginner going into the gym who's never lifted a weight a day in their lives and saying, hey, how do I get a better bicep peak? And you're just kind of like, you just need to move. Like You just mm -hmm. need to, to start lifting weights if that's what you want. Um, supplements we think of as one of those things where you're trying to get from 8 to 6% body fat. If you, are, however, though, or for most people in general, if you're asking about supplements, what we usually find is that you actually need to take a look at just eating more whole foods, mm -hmm. eating the better quality of foods. 
how you arrange your nutrients throughout the day. Usually those things will actually solve the problem. So basically, long story short is um, I think a lot of people are looking for a quick fix and they think like, oh, if I want to lose weight, I should take the supplement versus looking at like the real stuff that will change your life, eating a good diet, moving your body daily, you know, getting enough sleep, lowering your stress level. Like these are the things that are essential to your success. Yeah, so sleep, great sleep yeah. you know, if you're looking at oh man, I'm not seeing results in my, in my fitness. I should really take the supplement. I want you to backtrack and just look at the basics. Are you hitting the foundations and are you hitting them hard? Are you eating a clean, healthy diet? Are you moving your body well? Are you sleeping enough and quality sleep? How is your stress level? These are the things that are actually really going to help you see results over time. There's really no supplement on the market. To, and, and actually that will save you a lot of money because supplements are really expensive. Well, so if you just do the basics and you hit them hard and you do them well, you don't really need a whole bunch of fluffer supplements. Yeah. Um, however, do work with a nutritionist if you're looking for specialized supplements for you. Say you have osteoporosis and you need a calcium supplement um, or you need a vitamin D supplement or you're you know, wanting to take magnesium. I mean, there's, there's a supplement... Um, depending on your individual needs, like maybe there's a supplement that would fit you, but um, don't just take it because, you know, oh, I think I need more protein or um, I like, you know, want this like fat loss, whatever. Like the diet industry is a multi-billion dollar industry because it's designed to sell you sell you products um, that don't work so that it sells you more products that don't work. The real things haven't changed. Eat real food eat good food, move your body, sleep enough, try not to stress yourself out, and um, you might be healthy and live a really long time without having to spend money on products. You're a fantastic example of that, the way you eat. I know you're always posting about that. Like my God, my way. Instagrams. Are you guys so, so sick of my Instagram stories? It's like, <laughs> here's another bowl of vegetables and another chicken breast. And, chicken, um, sweet potatoes. Yeah, sweet fish. potatoes all the time. A question so. you might enjoy tackling from, uh, from Audrey um, about the psychology of pain. Oh, this is a really interesting one. Um, so do you think thinking less of the pain and what effect it has on your life? Um, this is a, this is one that I'm very, gosh, like this is very attached to my story and recovering from a really serious sesamoid injury. Um, you know, it's hard. I think a lot of pain is psychosomatic and, um, you really do have to work on, this is why I love movement and challenging your body safely through movement, because if you can start to rebuild the confidence and trust in your body, it starts to enable you to not fear re-injury and pain. Um, but this is something that I'm still dealing with to this day. Like I, every time I feel pain, especially after that injury, um, yeah, I call I call Michael and I'm like, oh my God, I think my knee might be broken because it's sore today. And the next day he's like, how's your knee? I'm like, oh, it's fine. But um, yeah, I have a really hard time coming back from that injury now because it was so game changing in my life. It just completely pulled the bug right out, out from underneath me, um, changed everything that now, you know, even though I'm very active and um, I'm very lucky to have healed from my sesamoid injury, still, you know, if I have a sore foot one day, I really have a hard time managing my mindset. But now I have a couple mantras that help me. Um, so in the moment, I really practice deep breathing. I remind myself that every time I've been sore in the past, it hasn't turned into a serious injury. Um, and, you know, I talk to myself the way I would talk to one of my clients. And that really helps me manage that. Um, because you can go really easily down a downward spiral of catastrophizing pain. Um, and pain is just a feeling. It's not permanent. Pain is not permanent. Um, and so if you can change your mindset, it will actually change your experience of pain. Do you have something totally. to add to that? Oh, totally agree. Um, I, you know, you can take, we know for sure, you can take an MRI of a given number of people in the room and in someone that's never had a day of pain in their life, you're going to see degeneration in herniated discs, given number of people in the room. And in someone that's never had a day of pain in their life, you're going to see degeneration in herniated discs. And then six feet over, because it's COVID, mm -hmm. um, you're going to see someone that has a ton of back pain and they don't even have a herniated disc. So you can see a false positive. Yeah. We know that is the case. You know, I um, I just rescued uh, my dog, Mini Toast. Yeah, bring Mini Toast. Bring Mini Toast. Mini uh, Toast is sleeping here. Mini Toast is sleeping. Um, um, sleeping. We'll show you her after. She's a rescue, and she she had a tougher life before she lived with me. And one of the things I was reminded of so quickly with Mini Toast is that she, if I would do any negative reinforcements, it, it's like it would set us back months. So imagine if you're a parent and, and your child brings you a, the same exact drawing of a fire truck every single day. 
and it's not high quality art. It's just a drawing of a fire truck. Mm -hmm. Every single day, you're like, oh, I love it. That's fantastic. Great job. Good efforts. And then that one day comes where a thousand times down the road, you're like another drawing of a fire truck. And you can just see the change in that person happen right away. It's like it sets back progress years. And the reason I was bringing this up is that pain is extremely psychological. It's actually rooted in the fascia of your body. It's rooted in your brain. And it's one of the reasons why, as you mentioned before, one of the first things we'll do with someone that has back pain, once they've been cleared, is we'll have them go deadlifts. And it's to psychologically teach their brain, let them know it's okay, exactly as you said. And that you can handle this and that your body absolutely can do that. And you can repair from it. So I think it's the whole story with mini toast. The point of that was to say that how are you talking to yourself about your pain? Are you saying, hey, my back is bad? Or are you saying, hey, my back is good, but it's pissed off at me? It's not like a hippie thing. That's not, you know, some mystical type thing. That's actually been proven that what you think about, your nervous system can't tell the difference between a well-conceived thought and actual reality. That's a scientific fact. So how are you talking to yourself? Are you saying my back is bad? Or are you saying, hey, listen, I've got some problems right now. I can fix them if I'd be smart about this. And that little change in psychology to answer your question a long way, I, I agree. I yeah, think it makes and sense. this is the thing, Audrey, like we see this all the time because both Michael and I work with clients that are healing from injury, injury recovery, right? So, um, you know, people become obsessed with their pain and then all they think about all day is pain and what you focus on expands. So if you focus on your back, my back is bad, my back is bad, you're reaffirming that statement to yourself. So all of a sudden that becomes true for you. And I think healing from pain goes twofold you do the movement safely with a coach guided to help you regain trust and confidence in your body and then you also do the mindset in re reaffirming that you can heal that you can move forward that you can feel better that pain is not permanent um so you know i don't know if that helps it sounds like it, it was helpful to you and i'm glad it was interesting what was your marker um, again sorry good job uh Oh, what do you say? Gosh, all sorts of things. Like I am healing. Pain is not permanent. Take a deep breath. Breathe through it. Um, trust in your body's ability to heal. The human body is amazing. It's amazing. I have seen miracles, but those miracles are not accidents. Those people not only have worked themselves physically out of accidents and injury, but mentally as well. I mean, you see, you read stories of this all the time. People sitting in their hospital beds thinking about visualizing that they can heal, that they have the ability to heal. So, you know, the mind is powerful. It can impact your healing and your journey in fitness. Audrey C says, it's okay. I'm not broken. Totally. You're not broken. You're not, you're not broken. You're not broken at all. And we will, we can help you heal. You so, got things you can fix, but we, you can fix them. Yeah, absolutely. So believe in that and affirm that to yourself. I would encourage you to move every day. Can you take a small, can you test every day? Because I would encourage you to do that. Sitting is sickness. It will really rot your body. The more you move, the better, um, safely with balance of course like don't go out and run a marathon tomorrow and every day following that um but i really think movement is medicine and it doesn't need to be like drop and sweat workout you can move safely every day go walking for 10 minutes stretch for 10 minutes you know get up do some deep breathing for 10 minutes but i would encourage you to move every single day safely day safely so um don't exhaust yourself but do do move your body. Great the human advice. body is, is made to move. Great advice. Um, do one push up. Start with one push up. Yeah, do one push up a day. Seriously. Every Just day. Get in the habit. Absolutely. Um, child's pose. Do that. Oh, Kylie, I did not fix you. You fixed yourself. I just was here to hold the torch. So. Um, I'm stuck in feeling broken. I've had injury after. So if you've had injury after injury, but you haven't looked at healing the whole body. So this is what happens. Like example. So I had high hamstring tendinosis on my left be two years prior to my sesamoid injury on my right. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if that <laughs> hamstring injury gave me my foot injury. That's so weird. That's so weird. So weird. Totally makes sense because I never properly, yes, maybe I fixed my hamstring and I got out of pain, but I didn't correct all the movement imbalances that had resulted because of that injury. So then I got a sesamoid injury. So it makes sense. Like it, if injury after injury is keeping you down, you really have to pull it back to basics and revisit building a foundation of your body from the ground up and from the top down so that 
you can correct muscular imbalances, work on your mobility, your stability, and your strength. And um, you've got to go slow before you go fast. This is why we keep getting injured is because nobody wants to shut it down and start from scratch again. I'm not saying you have to stop moving entirely, but you do have to kind of pull things back and uh, start with the basics again. And on Muddy That Water. So one of the things that I think you guys are all drawn to in Caroline's channel is that she gets that it's not just about working hard. No pain, no gain is something that's just vastly misunderstood. It's not that you don't work hard. It's just that we think that just going in and laying in a sweat angel at the end of a workout is the only thing to do. Mm -hmm. The reality is you should feel better at the end of a training session. You may have worked hard, but it's not just about working hard. Usually you need to, as she said, slow down, work on capacities or competencies rather before you work on capacities. Mm -hmm. If you got a big Ferrari engine, in the chassis of a geo okay you're not going to go very far you're, you're going to blow out right okay so you got to work on your your competencies mm -hmm. how you move you need to move well before you move better and that's the thing that you know none of us are educated in this stuff we don't take classes on this in school no we one should ever says this, and we should no one ever says this stuff to us mm -hmm. so yeah you may need to slow down you need to unmuddy that water and just then separate everything out so you can get a clear picture of how you move and i just want to say yeah judah slowing down is really hard like but it's not as scary as you think it is it's so hard yeah. you know i understand like slowing down and pulling back to basics and like working on your core and working on your hips isn't necessarily fun but it's so rewarding it because then you layer on the foundation of a house that can carry you for the rest of your life um, and it's, it doesn't actually take as long as you think you do need to work with someone who knows what they're doing. Don't just Google, like, I don't know, but exercises, you're going to find those in influencers, those Instagram influencers that don't know anything, um, that don't know squat, but, um, you know, slowing down, isn't that scary. And if it's actually a lot less hard than dealing with a million injuries. So wouldn't you rather slow down and be smart about building strong foundation in your body than have a knee injury, a hip injury, and then an ankle injury because you just never slowed down? FYI, slowing down usually means learning to create tension in parts of your body where you don't actually know how to control. And FYI, that does translate into lower body fat and it translates into looking more toned and mm -hmm. things like that. So mm -hmm. you made a great point. It does not to say that you're going to hang out with a little purple band for four <laughs> weeks. You may take a two week hiatus, fix a couple things, get back, and then you can still work hard and look great. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I think this is what people don't understand. Like functional movement does lead to aesthetic results. It does. It does. Great point. But people think that they have to go do Barry's boot camp seven days a week to see to see like a six pack abs. No, you actually just need to learn to engage your core properly and you might actually see more definition in your core for everyone on here fyi going and getting the burn with your core doesn't get you abs mm -hmm. we've known this for decades it's learning to create tension and strength in your core which often looks like moving slow yep moving slow moving well with intention and breath and focus not you know doing a million crunches and like giving yourself a neck injury yeah absolutely yeah is this going to be on youtube after so i can rewatch? yes it will the replay is all the replays for the lives will always be on youtube so definitely um, I'm what's called a weekend warrior because I legit have no time in the week. What should I do to get the most out of my time at workouts? Now, can I challenge that, Hannah? Do you legit like not have 10 minutes that you could like do some core work or some stretching or some mobility? Um, I understand like life is so busy and I mean, I've been working seven days a week since COVID started. So I know I feel you. Um, but what would you, how would you advise that question? I'd also like to hear the answer. I mean, we totally get it. We're both working that there's a difference in busy and priorities. If you want to carve out 15 minutes a day or something like that, it actually can make a big difference because sometimes maintaining movement will keep you stronger on a more consistent basis than doing one or two hard workouts mm -hmm. like in the classic uh okay so yeah i can find you can find minutes. like this is the thing and we might have to end this soon because my computer the battery is going to die the zoom the lives take a long uh a lot of battery but um this is the thing like it doesn't need to be 60 minutes there's it should not be black and white all or nothing like your body is made to move and maintaining that movement is going to help you keep stay active and healthy for the rest of your life so wouldn't you rather move a little bit on a daily basis versus really really hard for two days a week um because the really really hard two days a week without more consistent movement actually might set you up for injury and it's not going to help the longevity of your body 
I think 10 to 15 minutes of movement a day, even if it's just walking or yeah, 20, 20 squats. Every time you go to the loo, I tell my clients that all the time you can do, yes, you can do 20 squats at breakfast, 20 squats at lunch, 20 squats at dinner. That's 60 squats. That's better than zero squats. Why aren't we doing that? You're going to detect a uh, pattern in my answers here. There's a lot of answers here that you guys can, we publish a ton of free content. You guys can, you know, learn a ton, but just with that, you don't always have to go assess and all that, but if you're someone like Hannah, where you're saying, hey, listen, I have 10 to 15 minutes a day, that is one area where you do want to spend a little time up front just getting assessed because I see that so often someone may think they have a shoulder problem. It actually is coming from their hip. Someone may think they got an ankle problem and it's coming from their shoulder. Like just invest a little time up front just to get assessed so you know what the biggest bang for your buck movement would be and then put together that 10 or 15 minutes yeah, boom now it's a habit you're spending zero time on it and and it's going to make a bigger difference remember this your body is the vessel that carries you through life if you don't take care of it like you brush your teeth every day you're not going to have good looking teeth at age 50 or teeth that work for you so before you just don't lose the ship that's going to carry you to see your grandkids dance in the park um, take care of it. Take care of it every single day. Give it the love it deserves, the attention it deserves. Prioritize it. It deserves to be prioritized way more than your email because here's the thing. Your email is going to be alive a lot longer after you if you don't do that movement. So um, leave the email for 15 minutes. Go do some squats. Um, you guys, I hate to end this, but my computer is about to die. Next time I'll try to bring my power cord to the park. If you liked this, give this video a big thumbs up and leave us a comment. Let us know if you want us to do more live coaches corners in the park, because it's so fun to hang out with you. And isn't coach Michael great? Like give him a big, like, woo, he's awesome. I'll include all of his great links questions. Thank in you the guys. description. Yeah. You guys were awesome. Um, we love hanging out with you. Keep moving your body, stay healthy, stay strong, stay fit. And we will see you again soon for another awesome live stream. Bye friends. Oh, I actually don't know how to end it. <laughs> We're hanging out for a while guys. <laughs> Bye guys. Have a happy weekend. Happy Labor Day. Go move your body. <laughs> well. Did you hear the girl in the back? Yeah, I did. The whole time I was like, oh no, there's somebody like who fell over. He just, he